Hey everyone, Adobe has done it again and created yet another game changing tool for Photoshop, which I want to show you with this quick video. So I'm going to put a link to all the files I will be using in the description of the video if you want to follow along. And now let's jump into it. Before we begin, keep in mind this is the Photoshop beta version. Everything you will see here is not yet available in the live version, but it should be coming very, very soon, I guess. So Adobe has added a new tool to its beta called the Generative Fill. And before I start to explain what this tool does, let me just show it with this quick example. Let's say I want to remove this HUD from the center of the image. So I'm just grabbing the lasso tool and making a very rough selection around it. Usually with the older Photoshop versions, getting rid of this thing would be near impossible because you can see there are some trees behind it, a mountain, and we also have some grass in the foreground. Getting this to look right using something like the clone stamp tool or the content aware fill is insanely hard. But what we can do now is you can see a new taskbar right here. And I'm just clicking on that generative fill button right there. Now you can either describe what you want to fill this selected area with, or let's just click on generate. Now this process will take a while, but it's totally worth the wait. And here we have the filled in area. At this point, I don't think I have to say anything more since you can clearly see how good this generative fill works. You can't spot a difference from the surrounding areas. And that's just with a single click of a button. Now. Adobe puts all this new filled area in a new layer right here. You can deactivate it to get the before version. And this also means you can do some further tweaking on this filled in layer. Plus Adobe gives you three different variations. So you can choose from different fillings. And you can see how they all look insanely good. I think with this you can understand why this is a game changing tool. So what else can we do? Let's say we do want to insert some wild animals in here. So again, I'm just using the lasso tool and I want to place some kind of deer right there. So I'm just going to create a rough selection somewhere in here. Click again on the generative fill button. And now we need to describe what we want to fill this area with. This, as you can see, only works in English for the moment, but that should be fine. Um, let's see, insert a deer and then hit generate. And once more, Adobe has done a really, really great job. You can see how also the grass is overlaying the deer's feet, but there are some strange things going on, which however, we can remove using a layer mask. So just clicking on here, grab the brush tool, set the foreground color to black since we want to remove it and just paint over this. I don't want to affect the shadow of course, just around this spot right there. So I'm not going to clean it up too precisely because I think you get the idea, but this looks really, really, really good. Of course, this is very scary for you if you're not that deep into the editing stuff and you want to keep your images natural. However, I think it opens up quite a few more opportunities for some creative image editing. Oh, and by the way, we do have some different variations again. So we can turn around that deer. But this looks a bit weird because I have masked out a few areas. Let's undo this change just like this. All right, that looks cool. And then we have a third version. But this looks super strange. I think I'm just going with the first one. One additional thing you might not notice before is the shadow of this generated object. You can see it's aligning pretty well with the natural light source coming in from the right side. Now let's try a few things on a different image. So again, I'm just grabbing the lasso tool and let's first get rid of this dude standing in the road. All right, so let's say we want to insert a car right there in the center of the road. Again, I am going to create my very rough selection like this. And I'm going to click on the generative fill button. And now let's describe this. Insert a red vintage car. I'm sure you could specify the brand of the car, but I'm not really a car guy, so I don't have an idea for that. But this should do its job. 
Let's hit generate. All right, there we have it. Of course, the lighting does not look very natural, but since this is on a separate layer, we can change that. Let's say we want to make it a little darker. I'm going to head, open up the adjustment layers and let's add the curves adjustment layer. Of course, I need to make sure the curves adjustment layer is only affecting the object below it. So I'm holding down the Alt key and click between those two layers. Now I can safely play around with the adjustments, making the new generated layer a little bit darker. Now you can see what else was generated besides the car. You might want to mask that out, making use of the layer mask, just like this. And this way, just insert new objects into your image. And of course, we can choose between different cars, which all don't look that great, to be honest. If you're not happy with the results, just hit generate one more time to fill it with different stuff. So I think this one is looking much, much better. It does look weird because I have masked out a few things, so let me undo that. And I can even turn off the curves adjustment layer. You can see this is fitting really, really well into this image. And I can also drag it around since it's on a separate layer. So that's very cool. But we are not done here. One problem, especially for landscape photography, is sometimes the framing isn't that good and we want to kind of expand the image towards the sides. However, this so far was really, really hard to do. Now let's go ahead and open up the canvas size and let's just add a few more pixels to the width. Let's say 4,500. I think that's not enough. Let's go with 6,000. All right, so we have those white gaps on each side. I'm just using the selection tool right there. Going to overlap the image a little bit like this. And now let's just hit generate your fill and we don't need to describe anything. Just hit generate. You see, this would have not been possible in another way. This is looking super natural with the inclining mountains on the left side and even the clouds look natural and it continued using that gravel on the side of the road. Let's do the same on the other side. Just select the area, hit generate fill and hit generate. Again, looking really good with the mountains in the distance. There's just some weird lens flare going on or something. We could erase that using something like the spot healing brush or just use the different variations Adobe is offering us. That's not looking good. This one does look good as well. So I think we're just going to use this one and remove that part with the spot healing brush. However, that's it for this quick Photoshop update. I hope you can see why this is a game changing tool. Of course, this is not for everyone since this is quite some heavy editing, but it will be super helpful if you want to remove a few tricky things in your images. Of course, this was mainly focused on landscape photography. I have already seen people do wild things with this, like changing people's clothes, but that's just not for me. So I hope this video was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.